Hey, econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. I've been looking at your comments on YouTube and everyone's freaking out about the new stuff in macroeconomics unit four, limited and ample reserves and the reserve market. Please stop freaking out. The college board might ask you one or two questions, but it's not gonna be the entire exam. And if you know the basics, you're gonna be fine. You need to relax. So I made this video with a quick overview and a practice for your response question. Let me simplify it by giving you an analogy. In one of my other videos, I told you that money is the lifeblood of the economy. It's one of the reasons why the Great Depression was so bad. The money supply decreased by 30%. The point is, money in the banking system is like blood in your body. If you're anemic and don't have much blood in your system, then adding or removing blood will have a noticeable effect. You would feel it right away. That's the same idea as limited reserves. If commercial banks are holding very little excess reserves, then any new money that enters the system will get loaned out quickly and will decrease interest rates. So when there's limited reserves and the central bank buys bonds, it's putting money into a system that has very little money in it. So there's a very noticeable effect in the economy. We would feel it right away. But when the banking system has ample reserves, that's like having plenty of blood in your body. Taking some blood out or putting some blood in isn't very noticeable. You wouldn't even feel it. And it's the same thing in the economy. If commercial banks have plenty of excess reserves, then increasing or decreasing the money supply doesn't affect lending and won't change interest rates. If the central bank takes some blood out, that's not gonna affect me very much, I got plenty of blood. If they put more money in the system, it doesn't really matter because they've got plenty of money that they're not lending out already. So how much you'd feel of a blood transfusion depends on how much blood is already in your system. And the effectiveness of traditional monetary policy, like changing the reserve ratio, or discount rate, or doing open market operations, all depends on how much money is in the system. If reserves are limited, then we're gonna feel the effects of those policies. But if there's ample reserves and those policies will not be effective and the central bank needs to use some other tool, they'll need to change the interest on reserves, the amount they're paying commercial banks for reserves. Just remember, money in the economy is like blood in your body. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's look at the graph. If, and I don't think they will, but if they ask a free response question on ample and limited reserves and the reserve market on the free response this year, it's gonna look something like this. I'll leave it on the screen for a few seconds so you can try it. Good luck. First is the labeling on the y-axis. You can put policy rate on the x. You can put quantity for the quantity of reserves. For AI, you draw a demand curve that's horizontal, then downward sloping, and then horizontal again. Technically, you wouldn't have to draw this horizontal part on top, but I'm gonna leave it in there for now. This side represents limited reserves. Over here is ample reserves. For A2, you draw a vertical supply of reserves in the downward portion of the demand curve. That's because that's the range that has limited reserves. For B, an increase in the money supply would increase reserves and decrease the policy rate. And you can see eventually an increase or a decrease in reserves has no effect on the policy rate. So if the banking system has ample reserves, what can the central bank do to increase interest rates? Well, they can increase the interest on reserves. The rate the central bank pays banks for holding reserves. This made up for your response isn't asking it, but on the graph, it would look like this. Let's be honest, you're probably not gonna watch econ videos for the rest of your life, but subscribing is a great way of saying thank you to me, and it tells YouTube that I'm doing a great job. Plus, you'll be able to see future episodes where I talk about economics in real life and econ movies. The next time I'm gonna see you is on the live review session I'm doing the night before the exam. Thanks for watching, till next time.